we did research and we learned about Bitcoin Beach. And when we came, being part of Bitcoin Beach was like the shrine that you go, you <laughs> yeah, go and visit. Yeah. And we, we never left. No, we had no idea. We seriously, we came with no expectations because we had no idea what we were coming to. We had a lot of fear sort of pumped into us before we left New mm-hmm. Zealand. You know, you're crazy. What are you doing? You know, it's dangerous. It's the most dangerous country in the world. The two of us ourselves we were excited. We were, yeah, you know, we were like, it. we just couldn't wait to get on the plane and, and come here. Doc, and it did take us, you know, I would say a week and a half to sort of get over that of what everyone had been putting, you know, sort of putting yeah. on our shoulders. And then once we realized that everyone is so friendly. So yeah. we talked about it and we decided this was a one way ticket. Mm. So we sold everything within six weeks for one Before ever visiting. Mm. Yeah. Never been to Central wow. America. <laughs> one way tickets. Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. Bitcoin country. Here we go. Yep. We are live here with Nikki and James. I, I don't know their last name. I think it's just Nikki and James in El Salvador because that's their their Twitter handle. So we'll we'll go from that. Um, they are refugees from New Zealand that have come to El Salvador in this past year, uh, trying to find a place where freedom still valued. So I um, don't know a lot about them. I've seen their videos popping up on Twitter. Um, they're pretty active in the community helping with different educational initiatives and, you know, just trying to give people a real perspective on what's happening here in El Salvador. So I'm excited today, along with with the audience, to to find out your guys' backstory, what brought you here, and what is keeping you here. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, Yeah, good to be here. (laughs) Yeah, it's really exciting to be here. Uh, We heard about the Jack Mellors announcement, which, of course, put this on the map, El Salvador on the map. Mm And then uh, we did research and we learned about Bitcoin Beach. And when we came, uh, being part of Bitcoin Beach was uh, like the shrine that you go you go <laughs> yeah, and visit. Yeah. And we we never left. No. Yeah. That's uh, Roman always or Chimbera always says that you know that uh, Muslims go to Mecca and Bitcoiners yeah. come to Hope yeah, House yes. in El Salvador. So yeah. uh, that's pretty funny. Um, and you guys came in February, is that what you're saying? Yeah. yeah, so we arrived um, about the 7th of February, yeah, took sure. us a big journey, a yeah. really big journey due to, you know, um, our keeping our, our personal sovereignty. We had to do, we weren't allowed to go through America soil. So we you were unclean. We so, were, yes. Yes. <laughs> so we ended up uh, going up to Dubai, then to Madrid, then to Guatemala. Then to El Salvador. I'm surprised you were able to go through Madrid. I didn't. I thought at that they, point, seriously, it was, that, a, it was a small window. Okay, a small window. Yeah. Yes, and so what happened is that we were four days traveling, and we were in the air for 40 hours. So normally, just to give perspective, <laughs> jump on a plane in uh, New Zealand, and 12 hours up to LAX, and then you come down here on four hours. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we were pretty naked <laughs> the time we arrived. <laughs> it was worth it. Yeah, and we arrived yeah. and it was dark night and we were lucky we did have some Salvadorans come and pick us up from the airport, which was great, and um, took us to our accommodation that we had booked uh, through a person um, in Nelson. She was Salvadoran. It was through her friends. And we thought we were going to have a reasonable accommodation. For a month. For a month. Yeah, prepaid for a month. All good to go. <laughs> And it was a bit of a culture shock for us. Yes. So but that was great. I mean, it makes for a great story. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Just the accommodations weren't what you were uh, thinking they <laughs> no. would be? Or? No. Far from what okay. We were yeah. 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 The photos, uh, yeah, they didn't, didn't, they were different to the reality. Yes. Yeah. But by the end of I mean, I put photos like myself online like that too. So <laughs> yeah. I love it. Yeah. You can do a lot with the right angle. Yeah, exactly. But by the end of it, uh, mm. you know, for us, guns aren't a thing in New Zealand other than mm. farmers basically uh, but here we'd go to the supermarket and there's dudes with shotguns standing around and after the first, by the end of the first week when we're going to the supermarket I'm um, busy high-fiving the yeah. you know the security guards and stuff mm. so it was cool yeah 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 and so you guys were in San Salvador when you first came 
Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so we had two weeks. We had booked for a month. Um, after the second day, we said we're out. We can't do this. And it took <laughs> us. It took us. Actually, luckily, Roman contacted Bitcoin Beach, and yeah. Roman helped us find yeah. some accommodation, which was awesome. So we got yeah. accommodation uh, after two weeks. Of, okay. And, and was that? Did you guys come down to El Sante, or did you stay yeah. in San Salvador? Or no, we we, we came down to uh, the. Um, just off the roundabout, the Surf City Highway, and that new subdivision. Okay. Up yeah, yeah, yeah. We found an apartment there, yeah. so okay. we were yeah based there for a, good. yeah three months. Which so we're basically the entire time that we've been here in El Salvador, we've lived by the beach, yeah, just down the road from Bitcoin Beach. That's that's <laughs> the place to be. I mean, if you're, <laughs> yeah. gonna be, if you're gonna be here, you want to be at the beach. Yeah. yeah. Um, curious as to when you left New Zealand. I've never been to New Zealand. New Zealand and Australia were, you know, I was on my list to go visit. I I thought they were like hardy country folk and then i saw the during the pandemic there are a bunch of you know nanny state lovers that want everybody locked up so i i was my whole perception of that part of the world was was changed but what was it like for you guys on the ground and was that part of the reason that you decided to come to el salvador yes it was for sure uh, in, in the beginning like everybody i think there was an air of caution of uh, we'll go along with what's happening see what happens yeah but uh, it just continued and it wasn't making sense if you looked in certain places and when you were basically being coerced and told not to look at certain things and something that the Prime Minister said was uh, one of the red flags was uh, she is the only single source of truth and yeah. this is recorded on video like I'm not <laughs> exaggerating uh, that's a big red flag like yeah. she's going to tell me that I should only listen to her and not do any of my own research. Of course, being a Bitcoiner, the first thing you go and do is verify. So, yeah, yeah I'm not going to trust mm. her. Yeah, I, I, I'm historically, I never would have known who the leader of New Zealand was. But during that time, her face was popping up everywhere saying ridiculous things. Yeah. So uh, she was one with the teeth, right? Yes. She had, yeah, 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 yeah. So um, and what did you guys find when you arrived here? Was it? what you were expecting other than your accommodations, mm. what what was it versus what you guys had in mind? We, we had no idea. We seriously, we came with no expectations because we had no idea what we were coming to. We had a lot of fear um, sort of pumped into us before we left New Zealand. Mm. And fear of El Salvador? Salvador. Yep, okay. yep. So there was a lot of fear going, oh, you know, you're crazy. What are you doing? You know, it's dangerous. It's the most dangerous country in the world. Um, yeah, so we had a lot of this. So when, we, you know, the two of us ourselves, we were excited. We were, yeah. you know, we just were like, we just couldn't <laughs> wait to get on the plane and, and come here. But with that fear and then when we were in the area we were in wasn't that bad but when we walked up the street to go to the supermarket you know there's the high razor wire mm -hmm. fences and you know all the dogs as well as the guards and the tinted windows of the cars like mm -hmm. you just <laughs> don't see that and you don't know what's behind it yeah, <laughs> you're like, Gangsters or whatever. yeah we're ignorant we're totally ignorant. yeah and so that was that was a bit of a shock and it did take us you know, I would say a week and a half to sort of get over that of what everyone had been putting, you know, sort of putting yeah. on our shoulders. And then once we realised that everyone is so friendly, you know, we didn't yeah. have any nastiness. We didn't have, you know, there was no cause for that. But, and you know. So, yeah. like Nikki mentioned, no expectations. So yeah. we talked about it, especially because neither of us have really lived in a third world country mm. before. And we decided this was a one-way ticket. Mm. So we sold everything within six weeks for one before tickets. ever visiting yeah mm. never been to central wow. america <laughs> one-way tickets let's do it yeah yeah bitcoin country here we go yep. yeah you guys are uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. burn the ships oh and, yeah uh, yeah yeah we certainly yeah. do because huh. uh, you know we we uh the whole sovereign individual mm. like we've read those books the bit uh the bitcoin standard and mm. things like that and they've shaped uh the the ethos that Bitcoin obviously stands for and helping us make that decision, take responsibility and make that decision. Yeah. 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 It's funny you mentioned the, the tinted windows. That's still something I, I can't get over here. We just bought a, a used vehicle and that was the first thing I did was went and have them take the tinting off because you can't even see how you're, you can't even use your side mirror at yeah. night because yeah. they're so darkly tinted, mm. but yeah. they, we, we bought a new car here probably five years ago and the dealership, that was the first thing they asked. Well, how dark do you want the windows tinted? And I said, no, don't tint them at all. 
and they looked at us like we were crazy like yeah. what what do you mean i'm like no i want to be so see just mm -hmm. leave them so mm -hmm. uh I, I think that's a cultural thing that you know with the the insecurity in the past i think now that yeah. things have gotten better here mm -hmm. i think we'll start to see that Okay. change yeah. but either that or salvadorans just have much better eyes than me <laughs> and can see somehow at night through this crazy tinting so oh, it's crazy some of them you see like batman logos and yeah Apple yeah. logos uh, yeah. With they'll have a little cutout yeah. in the yeah. windshield yeah. That, 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 that's what they're like looking through this yeah. little cutout yeah. it's crazy mm. yeah that's, pretty uh, funny. that's funny well yeah. you guys bought a car here does yours uh, do. are the windows tinted or is it uh I, yeah but then they're definitely not as dark as like uh if you were a gangster yeah okay. <laughs> <laughs> But I do have to wind the windows down at night when yes. I'm using the side mirrors to yeah. back into yep. the spot. Yeah, yeah, that's that's funny. So you guys sold everything in New Zealand. Yeah. You've bought a car here. Are you in the process for residency? Or are you just leaving every ninety days? Or um, no? So um, that was the first. So first six months of actually being here was our focus of a buying a car, finding a decent place to live, mm -hmm. and getting our residency. So we pretty much in the first um, yeah six months got all that sorted, okay. and which we, is good. We even yeah. set up a little business. Oh, set up a company. Which, okay, which mm. we've got as an entity, which we're slowly trying to do something with because yeah. we want to be part of the economy. And did you mm. get your residency through the business yes. that you set up? Okay, yeah. it's yeah. part of the process. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Um, as far as car shopping, um, <laughs> what do you but, want to know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What an I, I mean, I've owned eight vehicles here in El Salvador. Mm. So uh, uh, one thing a lot of people don't realize is probably about 80% of the vehicles in El Salvador were ones that were in wrecks in yeah. the U.S. Mm. And they were damaged to the level where it wasn't cost efficient to fix them in the U.S. And yeah. so they ship them down to El Salvador. And they can make them look amazing oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but half the time the things don't line up well and so i i have got to the point where i won't i won't buy one of those i'll only buy one that was they say de agencia here from the agency right mm -hmm. um did you guys buy one that had been wrecked or oh, yeah. did okay yeah. Yeah. okay so we did it was um uh, crazy the amount of people who promoted or advertised a car on Facebook Marketplace or um, mm. everywhere we would look, but they weren't actually prepared to sell it. Sort of, yeah. you know, would say, oh, well, we'll meet you here at this garage and they wouldn't turn up. And yeah. so the amount of times we went up to San Salvador with like four or five cars, knowing that they were gonna come and maybe we'd be lucky if one would turn yeah. up for us to go through the mechanic check yeah. was huge. And it got to the point where we just like we were spending too much time and money driving, getting being driven up yeah. to San Salvador. So it's a forty five minute trip, uh, one way. Yeah. Mm. And so we got to pay for a driver to do that, and then there was just entire days lost up mm. there waiting for people to turn up. And mm. it got to a point where I'm like, I don't care. The next car, we're just, we're just <laughs> buying it. We're just done. Let's do this. Well, and, a lot a lot of times it won't be the actual owner that's advertising. Yeah. It'll yeah. be mm -hmm. somebody that knows somebody might want to sell a car, mm -hmm. and sometimes I'll list it. With Without even their permission yeah. and then they'll tell them hey i got somebody that wants to buy your car yeah and yeah. so that's why you have a lot of those things yeah. kind of fall through like yeah. that uh well we had a lawyer check it so we we're all legit yeah. uh if anyone's coming i highly recommend what you do is book a month to stay in in san salvador yeah. <laughs> so you can uh don't waste time coming yeah. back and forth ubers are amazing in san salvador cheap mm. and convenient yeah, yeah. absolutely and I think, uh, I mean, we were we were lucky. I mean, we ended up spending, you know, maybe a couple of thousand more than what we would have oh, yeah. thought to, sp you know, play, thought we were going to spend. Uh, but we managed. Yeah, I, I had sense. a I had a much better <laughs> Japanese car in New Zealand for less, uh, maybe a third of the price. I'm gutted. Yeah. I'm so gutted. <laughs> but it, it's it is what it is. Yeah. 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 No, I I found for for the wrecked cars mm -hmm. that you get there. The used ones, they're probably about the same price that you'd pay uh, in the U.S. Mm -hmm. But if you get one that's used, the Agencia, you probably are paying like a 30 to 40 percent premium over a similar vehicle in the U.S. Yeah. And for new vehicles, if it's a car or an SUV, you're generally paying anywhere from 30 to 50 percent premium on a new vehicle. Mm -hmm. But the smaller four-door diesel pickup trucks, for some reason, are actually cheaper. I think it's the way, I think they're exempted from tax structure, uh, from paying any tax, because they're considered okay. like a work vehicle. Okay. So 
I always recommend mm. people, especially if you're okay driving a stick shift, yeah. mm. the, the best bang for your buck is a four door crew cab, diesel, um, mm. four by four, like the Nissan time. or Toyota mm. pickup that you can get for between 30 to 35,000 mm. new. Well, um, a classic New Zealand farm vehicle. We're, yeah. We're, we're right at home with those. Yeah. yeah. No, that's, I mean, th those are the ones that definitely you get the, and they hold their value like crazy. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we have a couple in the project that we bought probably four or five years ago, and I think we could sell them for the same price now that we paid for them new. Mm -hmm. Just, and part of that's just because of COVID and all the crazy, you know, there's a lack of vehicles here like everywhere else. But yeah. um, I always warn people, have a little patience mm -hmm. oh, when yeah. you're thinking about a vehicle here, because yeah. it is, it is yeah. a little bit of a it process. Is. Yeah. And it also, I mean, we chose not to go for four-wheel drive but now when you think about it you know with some of these roads a four-wheel drive is definitely the well, way to we, go we would have had to have gone for an older vehicle uh, yeah yeah and they're just but they can be a bit more expensive to maintain as well mm. with tires and if yeah. selling brakes mm. and stuff mm. like that so anyway lessons learned mm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you got that you got the car sorted yeah. out mm -hmm. uh how have you found real estate and housing and and What's that been compared to your expectations? Yeah, again, initially, well, not. Well, I'm not going to talk about that first little place that we're in, um, but when we moved to the second place, we were quite surprised at the cost of renting uh, compared to what it would have been in New Zealand. It was definitely a lot more. Yeah. Um, but again, we had amazing views of the sea and the pool, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah. you know, you had those little benefits there. Um, but the place that we're in now, um, great. I mean, we've got a really That's good awesome. we've got a really good uh, yeah. rental, and it's in a it's in a pretty gated community. A um, lot of expat Bitcoiners are there, so nice. we've got. A, are you guys at the beach or what? Yeah, in okay. Sunglass. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, mm. we we were in a, a residential block off the beach, and it comes with a beach club, which mm. we have access to. Mm. Uh, Twenty four hour uh, security guards, and it's got a gym and pools, which is awesome. Uh, yeah. there's, a, there's actually a, we've, we give a tour on our uh, YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah it, it seems because there's been such a draw with with Bitcoin in this region. The closer you are to El Zante, or if you want to be yeah. in El Zante, oh, yeah. you definitely are going to pay a, a pretty significant premium. Yeah. So we do hear that from a lot of people. Of mm -hmm. whoa, this is more expensive than I would have paid in you know the U.S. Now mm -hmm. a lot of times they're comparing not to being on the beach. They're comparing mm -hmm. you know they're coming from you know, Kansas or something. Yeah. And so, yeah. you know, it's not really apples to apples, right. but um, it's, I, I would say for us coming out of California, it's definitely cheaper living in El Salvador. But if you're coming from a low cost state in the US, it's probably pretty similar. And so I think a lot of people have this expectation that it's going to be 20% of what it was mm. anywhere else. Um, yeah. yeah. So. And then now we're, our New Zealand dollar to the US dollar is quite, a, there's quite a big exchange yeah. difference there too. <laughs> so, you know, we've got to take that into account. Yeah. Know, yeah. Well. The, Cause the New Zealand dollar is pretty weak right now. Right? Yeah. Well, yeah. It's, it's bounced back a little bit yeah. okay. in the last yeah. week or so. Yeah. But yes. Yeah. So I'm assuming even like groceries and stuff like that seem expensive here compared to New um, Zealand. Going to the Mercados, no. So we, we do do a weekly shop at the Mercado. So uh -huh. we go down to La Libertad and go and get all our fruit and veggies mm. every week. Uh, and that's great. Absolutely Fun experience. brilliant. Like we yeah. love talking to the locals. Like yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, we've got guys mm. that like you now one guy is always like, Come on, yeah, you gotta come up. And <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. And to practice our Spanish and uh, yeah. we've got we've got a couple of guys on Bitcoin Point. down there. Yep. And, yeah, nice. So, mm. Mm. Yeah, the the markets here are pretty easy to to navigate and and you don't some places you go and if you're a foreigner they try to like hose you in other mm. countries but in El Salvador in general you don't find that, you know. Yeah. Maybe you don't get the best best price, but they're going to give you maybe the same price they'd give a Salvadoran that's coming from the city or something. Yeah. Yeah. You know, maybe they give their neighbor a little bit more of a break, which is yeah. fair. So Yeah, absolutely. And I also think that um now that we cuz we go weekly you know, the and we go to a couple of stalls pretty much every week, the same ones. Yeah. They're really good now. You know, they'll add an extra few vegetables or what have you, and it's 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 brilliant. It's, yeah. yeah, that's really cool. Mm. So that that the cost of our fresh fruit mm. and vegetables is actually relatively good compared to what mm. we're paying in New Zealand. Mm. Uh, otherwise, we go to the city once every two weeks, and we do basically Price Mart, which is the Costco and yeah. uh, the main supermarket, and a couple of other things. And I wouldn't say that it's much cheaper no if anything it's american prices so yeah, yeah. for us it's well so price mart is is basically the same as um 
what what Costco. is it in the U.S. Costco? Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would say generally it's like thirty percent more here than we would pay in the U.S. Oh, okay. um, so we still will go there for some things. It depends yeah. depends what the things are, but um, but in the last few years we found that you can actually get decent meat here. For a while mm-hmm. the meat was really not that great, but the last few years they started bringing it out of Nicaragua. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah that's um, what we find. at the supermarkets yeah. you can actually get mm-hmm. you know really nice. You know the big tomahawk steaks, mm-hmm. or yeah. Uh, yeah. what else we usually get? The uh, um, like the New Yorks, and I mean you can get them for like six six dollars a pound, yeah. which is cheaper than the U.S. So right. um, I've been pretty pleased with that. Yeah. Right. We just so. had some locals introduce us to the was it? Um, okay. I can't remember. Buyuso. Buyuso. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 That's a Buyaso. I think. Yeah. Buyaso. Buyaso. Yeah. 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 I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> that feeling could be too, but uh, some of, some of our fr- good friends, good Salvadoran friends, yeah. now. They introduced us to it on the weekend and yeah, we were like, barbecue. well, we, yeah, on the barbecue, we're like, we got to buy some of this and it's, it's a cheap cut too. Yeah. Mm. yeah. 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 That's, well, that's, that's the, th- I'm not sure how they cut things in New Zealand, but that was one of the things for us to get used to is they, they cut everything different here. Yeah. So what right. you're used to looking for, you mm. couldn't find it and you find all these weird looking things and, yeah. you know, something we're used to cutting this way. They cut this way and it's, right. it's the same yeah. meat. It tastes good, but you, you're like, oh, I don't know. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, you, yeah. yeah. And actually, our yeah, well, um, first, we did it. We paid out Bitcoin for the first time at Price Mart this trip. Yeah. So, how was that? It was good. Uh, it was the first time we've used an Athena point of sale mm. system uh-huh. and it was all on chain. So, there was no lightning option. Yeah. Uh, mm. We did spend $300. So, it is actually a large amount to spend on the lightning network. Uh, generally, we don't have liquidity problems with that amount, mm. but uh, we had to hang around for a few minutes to wait for the transaction. I hey, did bump my yeah, fee. Yeah, I was going to say you bumped a fee. Yeah. yeah. To speed. Okay. Yeah. I um yeah we've we've waited up to two hours before right. on a on a big purchase mm. there. <laughs> when it was when the beginning they were still figuring it out and um, but yeah because they require, I think at that time they were requiring three confirmations. I right. don't know. Were they waiting for that many for you guys, or was it just one? Well, the store manager came over and he he took um, screenshots and photos and he went away and he and I, he didn't confirm to me what it was. He just came back about three to five minutes later mm. and said, "All good, you can go." Mm. And I was like, "Sweet." And that's that's actually not not bad at all yeah. Yeah. compared. You know, obviously it's it's not mm. ideal. It's not where we want it to be. Mm. Yeah. But um, yeah, so it was just great to be able to do it though. Yeah, we were yeah, yeah we were at, we, you know, we just yeah. love doing Bitcoin transactions, mm. regardless if it's on chain or yeah. Lightning. Yeah, this is fun. Yeah, yeah. So. though I um, it, I, I'm embarrassed to say it, but I I got to the point where for a while I just stopped even mm-hmm. trying because mm-hmm. I had so many just really frustrating situations where they would say they take Bitcoin yeah. mm-hmm. and you get in it and it's the Chivo wallet mm-hmm. and oh, they're yeah. only. Yeah. Can, they create the dollar QR mm-hmm. code and you yeah. scan it and it says this is not a valid QR <laughs> code. So you try to explain it to them that, hey, you need to move it over here to Bitcoin. And then once you're there, we drop down here and go to Lightning. Mm-hmm. And they're like, no, my boss said only dollars. Mm-hmm. I'm like, well, you can receive it in dollars. You just need to auto convert it. You can still receive it as Bitcoin. Yeah. And they're most of the time they're just adamant of no. And and yeah. And I get it because here... If they're if they come up short, it comes out of their paycheck. Yep. So you're buying thirty dollars. That's a couple of days' pay yeah. to them. And if something goes wrong, which even when everything has gone right, there's times where the you know there's history mm-hmm. with the Chiba wallet of of things not landing. Yeah. So I think too that's the other reason they only want to do the Chivo one is because when it's the Chivo to Chivo, I think the success rate is higher and they don't have the disappearing payments like they have historically right. when you're making an actual bitcoin payment to them so it's yeah. so i get it i get it on the employee side i get it on the store side but you know we right. we need to fix that yeah. or yeah. or it leads to a bunch of frustrated people and yeah. you know one of the weird things that i found is my daily schedule is is just doing inter- press interviews like that everybody wants to come here and do interviews and so it's nonstop. I'm mm-hmm. like having to defend Chivo because they'll say, hey, on our way here, we stopped at Super Selectus and we tried to buy this or we 
tried to buy gas. They said they accept Bitcoin, but when we tried it, it didn't work. Is is yeah. Bitcoin down? Yeah. They told us Bitcoin was down. Yeah, like, yeah. We were at the Texaco um, to get fill up with gas yesterday as well. And we um, asked rumors going around they accept Bitcoin. Yeah, <laughs> so, so we went and asked if they accept Bitcoin. They go, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they brought the sheet with a whole lot of different payment schedules, and of course, it was the Chivo. But it was the banking system of the Chivo. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, a fiat, yeah. fiat barcode. It, yeah, it wasn't yeah. even the Chivo no, app. No. It was that you could scan this yeah. QR code mm. for I think it's Banco Agricola, yeah. and they can somehow connect to your Chivo account mm. with your ID number. Yeah. But it, it's yeah. not Bitcoin no. A, no. at all. I mean, there's not even a way. You can't even show them how to change no. it so that you could use Bitcoin. Yeah. And but. But they'll say, no, we, we take Bitcoin because yeah. they think Chivo is Bitcoin. And yes. So that's one of the, the frustrations. And, mm -hmm. and that's, that's why I've, I've gotten in a, a little bit of uh, uh, hot water lately of uh, criticizing Chivo. But I, I think it just needs, it's been long mm -hmm. enough. Like this needs yeah. to work. We have all this press from around the world that's pouring yeah. in. They have this opportunity to do all these great stories mm -hmm. for this transition that's happening in El Salvador, mm -hmm. but then they get focused on the fact that they can't even get their tr transaction to, yes. to clear, yeah. or that they only it'll only work if they have the the Chivo the app. And, yeah. and the same thing with tourists. They come in and say, "Hey, I thought you guys took Bitcoin here, and they told yeah. me they took Bitcoin, but it's not really Bitcoin." And so um, that really needs to be solved. And and in all fairness, for most locals, that's not an issue because most of them at, at least have the Chivo as one of their options. Yeah. So if they're using a Chivo wallet themselves, they don't have those challenges. But yes. mm -hmm. that's not really Bitcoin. And the benefit, all the secondary benefits of El Salvador adopting Bitcoin, the tourism and the positive press go out the window when it becomes just another payment app. And so yeah. that's mm. kind of what um, I've been on the war path about is we we need this to work. The 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 you know powers that be are already aligned yeah. against what's happening in El yeah. Salvador. Let's not yeah. feed them. Let's yeah. not Great. give them cause to uh, for criticism. So and with the Chivo being the you know the government wallet as such or the company, you know, the country wallet, then it really does need to have a little bit of oh yeah um, yeah TLC and it's each edu again education well, um, it's a yeah lot. and I'd love to I mean if anyone mm. that is uh, listening Alpha Point or Chivo or <laughs> <Rick> Kelly <laughs> uh, but one of the things that I would love to see is actually the Chivo wallet to go lightning first and this is one of my biggest things like uh, I live in a lightning first country so basically it's going to be my priority to promote that. Uh, even some of the Bitcoin wallets that we're using, I would like them to be a bit more lightning first because it is definitely like the cash layer. And I think mm. that that's what we should be teaching. Yeah. So the unfortunately with Chivo, it's some weird USD Chivo system first, then it's Bitcoin on chain, then it's lightning. And it's actually hidden through the app. And we've done our best to get hold of apps when we can, uh, go through the process and learn as much as we can. And then I can actually recite to people quite well now how to do it even though I've never had the app and never really been able to play with it in much detail and I actually had a Salvadoran living in the States today messaging me asking me all these crazy questions I said look if I could just get the app and just show you it'd take like 15 seconds to show you and you're asking me all these questions and it's like a 30 minute conversation over text to try and explain why it's like this but I would love to see Chivo go lightning first and I think that would solve a lot of the challenges in terms of the education that's needed to try and help people understand what's happening with this. What's this USD QR code? No, I was told that you can send Bitcoin to my USD QR code, but not that one. You go to the next on-chain Bitcoin address and create a QR code which can auto-convert to USD. But this is a really hard concept to share with them. Yeah. Uh, especially people like staff members where they get one random foreigner come in during the week and say, hey, can I please pay? And they're like, oh, man. And they pull out the app, which they haven't used for weeks or months. And then they can't remember and they don't use it daily themselves. So uh, it's a process. Well, part, part of the reason that it's not being used more is there's lots of people like me that have kind of given up. Mm, and yeah. so I've made a point recently like, hey, it's time to make another push on this. Yeah. Yeah. They've had enough time to, to fix these bugs. Yeah. Um, me and and one of the guys from Alpha Point kind of got into it in Argentina at the conference there because 
I'm like, hey, man, you, you guys are going to be what kills this from working. You guys need to go exactly what you were saying. It needs to go lightning first, then the availability for them to go on chain. And if you guys want to have your Chivo QR code in there, it should be overlaid in one of those other options yeah. so that if they only pull that up, they can people can still pay with a real Bitcoin wallet. Yeah. I mean, that's what Cash App does in, mm -hmm. in their system. They have all three of those QR codes that are overlaid together. Yeah. And that it's never going to be solved. They kept pushing back. Well, we just need to educate the people. You're mm -hmm. not going to solve those things with education. Yeah. You need to you need to solve it with the user experience. It needs yes. to be intuitive. Yes. It needs to be, hey, this just works. Because that's the other thing. For the, the employees, it's harder for them. And yeah. so they want to steer people away from it. Mm -hmm. Where I found at uh, Crown Plaza during the Bitcoin conference, mm -hmm. they're using Ebex and it just worked so well that yeah. the staff was like happy to have you pay in Bitcoin. Yeah. They're like, Oh yeah, just paying Bitcoin, it's it's easier. The the best point of sale experience is we have a uh, uh, shops that use Ebex. Yeah. yeah. So they they the the staff always seem to be incredibly happy and they use it really well. No, they've done a, a fantastic job. I don't know. I think we have a video of uh, my experience at Super Selectos the other day. I'll see if if uh, Andy can pull that up for us. Um, just so people can kind of get an understanding of like what this actually is that. Yeah we're running into and and it can seem like oh well it worked that's not you know the end of the world what are you guys complaining about but people have to realize like it has to be the easiest yeah. thing it has to compete with cash and credit cards mm -hmm. for people to actually want to use it or else yeah. they're going to just push people away from it yeah. something so. I love like in chivo wallets defense the, it is an incredibly powerful app. The The problem that they solve and the bridge that they've built between El Salvador and the US, it's going from fiat to using Bitcoin rails and back again. It's amazing. Oh, yeah. It's it's so cool. No, I'm not a critic. I'm yeah, a fan. I, I, I am glad there is the Chivo wallet. Yeah. I'm glad they're playing yes. that role. You know, like any Bitcoiner, I have my concerns about it being run by, yeah. by any government. Um, but I understand the reasonings for it. I understand the value that comes from having that. So I want to see it succeed. Um, can we hit play there, Andy? So this kind of, I, I was trying to like, not be like in your face with my phone while I was recording <laughs> this. So it's, yeah. it's not the, the best recording, but it's, so you see him here, he's having to like dig into his screen somewhere yeah. and like toggle through a bunch of screens to get wherever mm -hmm he can actually create the um, Chivo QR code. Mm -hmm. And then he kept asking me, are you paying with Bitcoin dollars or with Bitcoin? It's I'm confusing, like, right? Yeah. Bitcoin. And he's yeah. like, okay. And so, you know, you're sitting there, you got people behind you in mm -hmm. line. You're like, eh, if yeah. I was just paying with cash, we'd be done by now. Yeah. And, you know, they're like, oh, stupid Bitcoin and people are yeah, holding up the line again. So, and, and for him, he's kind of like, Okay, I think I got it. Now you have to come around and scan. So I got to walk around and, and scan, you know, the, the QR code. Um, so I scanned the QR code. And then I didn't realize um, they are actually, so they're doing on chain, but he accepted it without any confirmation. So, you know, it still takes a while for it to register that the, Payment has been initiated, mm. but he let me go before there was any confirmations. Now, I don't know if that's store policy. their store policy <laughs> or if they just don't understand it. Yeah. But if I would have had to wait for a confirmation, it, it could have taken, you know, it mm. could take hours depending on if the mempool yeah. is full or not and, and what the fees are. Yeah. And so this is why lightning first is really important because mm. uh, you know straight away if it's going to fail yeah. or not. It's uh, they're, they're doing themselves a disservice. They're doing the concept of being the first Bitcoin country in the world a disservice. And I'd love to see Chivo go lightning first. Yeah, that, that's what I, I've kept pushing them on why they're not. And I haven't gotten a straight answer as to to why that is. But yeah, because it, it is buried with within the app. <laughs> Super so. buried because it's not a even the even the navigation flow to get there it changes like you you push different kinds of buttons to get to a 
it's just yeah yeah it's not cool but it's it's frustrating because it's like i actually like the setup of the wallet i like the way it can go back and forth between dollars and bitcoin everything's there if they yeah. could just get rid of the stupid chivo qr or integrate it with an existing one and make it lightning first yeah. or or if they what is it bip 21 that integrates them all and your wallet chooses whether you you want it to be lightning or on chain i mean that that would be ideal yeah. um but yeah it would it would just make all these issues go away all this yeah. and then my inbox would stop being filled up with dms from you know <laughs> irate bitcoiners yeah. that like hey you told me i could use bitcoin yeah. here and they're not really using Bitcoin. They're using Chivo QR code. And I'm like, no, you can. You just got to talk the cashier into doing it. They're like, yeah. I don't speak Spanish. How am I going to convince this cashier to? So, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I don't, I don't want to delve too much on that. Um, and I, like I said, I, I want to see Chivo succeed, mm -hmm. but my patience is running, you know, at, at its end, this, yeah. this needs to happen for the country, not, not for my sake. I mean, I can use credit cards if I want, yeah. but yeah. I, if we want this to be successful, yeah. it's good. It's good. I should want to use Bitcoin everywhere I go yeah. because it's the easiest thing. Mm -hmm. So, um, and you guys had mentioned you'd had some issues with, uh, ATM. I don't know if, oh, uh, not, not a, we, so we haven't had issues with Chiva. Okay. We yeah. have every experience has been a good experience. Yeah. We have had yeah. friends who've had a lot of issues with um, depositing cash and wanting Bitcoin and haven't got the Bitcoin. Yeah, and it's of course, taken weeks and weeks to get the Bitcoin. And yeah. then these Bitcoiners become pretty frustrated and disillusioned mm. with the system because now they're being KYC'd and they're like, "This is this wasn't the deal. I was I gave you money and I was meant to get Bitcoin. Yeah. And now now you're asking for my personal ID. It's like, what's is this a psyop? Like what's going on? Mm. And I don't blame people who are frustrated at that because. It's not like you can ring Chivo and get it sorted in an hour. It's taking weeks. This is also unacceptable service when you've taken somebody's money to then say, oh yeah, we'll casually get to it in weeks. Mm. Uh, that's, uh, yeah, it's really unprofessional. Yeah. Yeah, and even being a government agency, I don't think it's acceptable for um, dealing with people's money. And there's, you know, there's definitely some interplay between the, you know, the, it's a private company, Athena, that's, that's running the ATMs. Um, I know the Athena team, they're, they're great guys. I know they're, they're trying to, you know, they <laughs> jumped into this thing. I, I think like everybody, they were a little over their head and so yeah. are playing catch up. Um, they are hopefully going to be integrating lightning. I mean, that would be the solution to a lot of these things because mm -hmm. then you don't have to wait for a confirmation that your yeah. payment is right there, right away. Um, I know they had issues more on the other end of people trying to get ca cash fiat back out because yeah. some of the wallets would send like one sat too few for oh, some yeah. reason. Yeah. And so then it would trigger on their end that no, the, the amount requested wasn't received. Mm -hmm. And obviously it was inconsequential, but it causes all this drama. So, yeah. um, I'm yeah. hoping I I've actually had. I don't use the ATMs hardly ever, but I've used them maybe a handful of times and they've always worked splendidly for me. Yeah. Um, usually the only time I'll use them is when I'm going to the airport and I need cash for something because I'm leaving the, the country um, and they seem to work really well. Right. So what we initially was, was doing, we were increasing the fees. So when we were, yeah. yeah. Well, we've got a little video where we share some tips that were given mm. to us and basically you use mempool to make sure you pay a high fee and but it's become to our apparent uh, it's come to our attention recently that you if you do rbf or no rbf mm. or whatever you turn off rbf and so uh, it's a zero confirmation basically and chivo atm will give you cash instantly yeah which is mm. awesome well i think there is some type of integration between the bitcoin beach wallet and the atms because anytime i use the bitcoin yeah. beach wallet cash. i get cash right cash. away yeah. Yeah. and so and and I know when they brought the first ATM, we helped them bring the first ATM into El Zante. And that was one of the issues we were having of people not waiting, wanting to wait for their long confirmations. And so they had some type of integration where the Bitcoin Beach Wallet would, would work really well yeah. with it. I think Bitcoin Beach Wallet may be doing um, like zero confirmations. I think it must be what they're doing. Because mm -hmm. I, I went to help our 
uh, one of our friends who rang me at 7.30 at night and I'm like, man, this is a real weird call. And he's like, I'm at the ATM, I wanna get out my money. And I'm like, I'll be, he was just down the road and I'm like, I'll be there in five minutes. I went down there and um, walked through it together and he got the cash instantly. And I'm like, what? Like, this mm. is, what's going on? I've never, I've never got my cash instantly. <laughs> Why is he special? Like, what am I missing? And that was the first sign of the, um, the zero confirmation mm. instant cash thing. And uh, I, we did it because we actually, what was awesome is we went from a Bitcoin Beach lightning payment to the Chivo ATM on chain. It was all handled seamlessly. Like, it's great. The Bitcoin Beach team have done an excellent job in making it idiot proof in terms of not needing to know if you're on the right chain or not. Um, and this this guy got the money straight away. It was awesome. Yeah. It was really cool. No, I, I and I wanna be empathetic for people who have had issues. And I've seen people, yeah. mm. even the person before me, like, hey, I didn't get my money and I, I go up and get it right away. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, hey, how did you get, you know, yeah. did you get my money? I'm like, no, look, this is the this is yeah. amount, yeah. this is. But, and, and the funny thing is the one time the, the guy before me was using a Chivo wallet to a Chivo ATM mm -hmm. and he didn't get his money and I was using a Bitcoin Beach wallet yeah. and I got mine right away. Right. So yeah. yeah, interesting. Cause I would have thought that the Chivo would have been a surefire bet, but it looks like Yeah, it. I think because it, it is technically a separate system and the ah. Chivo on the ATM is really just the branding and the, you know, and, and the government's picking up the fees, I think, for people that right. are using the Chivo wallet. And so, um, yeah, I, I'm i still hopeful that they're yeah. going to fix yeah. some of these things. Um, I, and part of the reason I've chosen to speak out a little bit more lately is because I started to get under the impression that people didn't realize there were all these issues because the government officials and the people within Alpha Point and the people in Chivo are all using the Chivo app when they access all these things. So for them, they're all working fine. And so I think they don't really understand the level of, of issues that still exist for any normal Bitcoin interaction. And that's what I've challenged them. I said, hey, go out there, use another wallet, any wallet, use several wallets for a week and see all these issues you run into and then tell me if I'm blowing it out of proportion. Yeah. It's not even that, and they can see the numbers if they look a little bit harder. The, just us, mm. we're just a couple of random people right here in the Bitcoin community. We've had uh, three or four people, like yesterday, two specific people talk to us who also have friends who have had this exact problem. They've put cash in and not received their Bitcoin. That just shouldn't happen, really. I mean, they've received the cash, they just need mm. to pay. It's, mm. it's not even a, a wallet technicality issue. They, they got the cash. And I think that they should really be on top of that, those experiences as well, because it's not even a, um, an app issue, right? It's <laughs> yeah. No, so I think there's like four different issues that, yeah. you know, yeah. are all really separate issues on their own. There's the one of the, the Chivo QR code that just needs to be, gotten rid of or integrated because that and i don't think they even realize how many problems that causes because oh. most of the time a transaction is never started because people can't actually initiate one so yeah. that i would say is is hampering half the transactions that don't go through is yes. and they're not seeing that at all yeah. um the second issue is is the on-chain versus the lightning and you know, having to wait around for confirmation times and, and that sort of thing. Yeah. And then you have the issue with the, the Chivo ATM mm -hmm. um, of it, people not getting their funds sometimes. Yeah. And and also just the fourth, I would say, is that they really need to have lightning on the, the Chivo yeah. ATMs. And so if, if they can kind of get those issues sorted out, I mean, it'd be fantastic. It would oh, yeah. be, you know, yeah. it, it would take yeah. away like half of the you know things that the media focuses on that are negative, they could just yeah. get rid of those and then we just deal with a normal FUD that is gonna yeah. come regardless. Yeah. I yeah, totally, totally agree. It would I think what's what's really like you, we we know a lot of people who are frustrated with the experience mm -hmm. and don't want to waste the time for like they put twenty dollars in to a hundred dollars in and then they spend more hours than if they had it just gone to work. You know, to, then it's worth to recover the money. Uh, so they are also abandoning, it, just even mm -hmm. using the system because of that. And these are Bitcoiners. And yeah. you don't want them to be abandoning it because the customer service to fix the issues is so poor because it, it suggests that 
the country that said we're Bitcoin first uh, is not committed to that. And that's the concern that uh, I think a lot of Bitcoiners that are here are feeling when they have those experiences. And I'd love, I'd love to see some proactive, um, and I don't, I don't know who to talk to. Like we've actually started reaching out to people to ask questions about who to talk to. Um, Cause like, I, I love to give constructive feedback. Yeah, and <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of people are saying, to, talking to us too, yeah. going, we need we needed some form of open forum or or just to mm -hmm. question, you know, who do we go and say that we've got these problems? Yeah, and yeah, yeah. We well, I, I'm I'm hopeful now with the opening of the the Bitcoin office mm -hmm. with with Stacy taking a lead role there. Um, you know, she she's obviously a Bitcoiner through and through, and, and understands these issues. She also understands the complexity of, of what they're dealing with with on the other end, and and I don't want to um, be naive on on how challenging that is when you have this government slash private app. You have the government, you have private companies, you have the government picking up the tab for these different parts of it, yep. and so you know definitely there's going to be challenges, but we need to make sure we're we're making progress, and that's yeah. where I was starting to get frustrated. Mm -hmm. Like. It feels like we're at a little bit of just a standstill, like we're at the same place we were six months ago. And that, that just really is not going to work for, for anybody, for especially Chivo, because, um, you know, nobody's going to want to, to use them and they're going to lose, yeah. you know, any, any trust that, that's in that system. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's my hope that they fix these things. It, it, was, it was fun having, uh, did you guys meet Paco from Run With yes. Bitcoin? Yeah, yeah. he was awesome. Yeah, great. So having him here, I think, was was good for me to, to talk to because he was, um, you know, while critical of these things, he's like, but man, you don't understand. El Salvador is like light years ahead of, yeah. of even places like Singapore, or these financial capitals in the world. He's like, I can use Bitcoin everywhere here. It's no problem to live yeah. on Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. He said, you know, even in places like Singapore, it was a challenge to try. You really had to like plot out your day. And then I think still he's often had to turn to fiat where yeah. in El Salvador, he's like, so I do think we need to kind of keep the bigger mm. picture um, yeah. in mind and realize we are in the Bitcoin capital yes. of the world. <laughs> El Salvador is light years ahead of anybody else. You can live just on a Bitcoin standard here, even if at times it's slightly less convenient than using credit cards. Yeah. You, you can do that. And so, um, yeah, I think it's it's good for us to not accept mediocrity. We want to keep pushing that they fix these things, but also give them, you know, uh, uh, an attaboy for getting us at least to here. Like, okay, we're we're halfway there. Let's make sure we don't stop. Yeah. Legal tender, baby. That's, that's <laughs> what we're here for. And uh, until another country uh, comes up with legal tender, this is the place to be in our mind. And uh, we, we, we see progress it's, of course it's not as quick as yeah. we'd love but we can we we're very close to surviving on a bitcoin standard yeah and we i mean we're out there nearly every day you know asking every time we go to any shop we're asking you know yeah. will you accept bitcoin and yeah. um if they don't uh if, say if it's a restaurant then our waiter will or waitress will ask have yeah. they got a, their own chiva wallet got a, or their personal own bitcoin personal wallet. wallet and yeah. we'll say look we'll tip you if you've got one yeah. And we've had people down in the club now who have specifically gone and downloaded one. So they'll yeah. tip. <laughs> I know. I know. Like, the Bitcoin is in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I want that table. Yeah, so so with that, and then even just the local, um, so the Mercado people, the storeholders, I mean, the small ma small businesses there that do survive on cash, they are wanting, you know, they're now looking at accepting Bitcoin. And we've got one. Slowly, slowly mm. but surely. Um, it, they need to see it. They need to see it yeah. working. Yeah. Um, some, it, it's, it's sorry. I, yeah, no, no. It's kind of funny sometimes because they say, oh, it's too slow, you know, open the wallet and scan mm -hmm. it and all that. But what happens is if we turn up with a $10 bill, they'll wander off down the road to go and get a change <laughs> and it takes them longer than it would have taken to open the app and yeah. uh, get it done. So it's kind of funny seeing that. Mm. Yeah. yeah, no, I, I, that is the reality, but, but we also have to deal with the perception. They think it takes longer and that's mm. why it is so important that everything goes to lightning, that yes. it happens fast. And yeah, that's, yeah. oh, that's the, the fifth uh, issue with Chivo is that their lightning payments take an inordinate amount of time to confirm. And 
this was another thing I got into it with some of the folks and they were trying to tell me that it was because of the KYC and AML they do. And I'm like, come on, Cash <laughs> App, Strike, all these other places do those same processes. Yeah. It's a clunky system, and mm. which is fine. I understand they inherited it a lot, but don't try to blame it on something else. Just say, mm. hey, we know it's an issue and we're, we're working on it because mm. you shouldn't have to wait 30 seconds for a, a lightning no. transaction. That is, that is not lightning. Lightning yeah. is, is, is yeah. yeah. And again, the, the Mercado, uh, you know, the coconut stall holder that we got on to the Bitcoin Beach wallet, they did have a Chivo wallet and they were sort of, um, when initially they, when they finally got on board with um, Bitcoin, they said, yeah, we've got our Chivo, we finally got it sorted. And that was really slow for them and they didn't like it. So we got them on the Bitcoin yeah. Beach wallet and they just loved that. Yeah, you know, the yeah. same same issue with the mm. Chivo wallet mm. is they have to go through this whole I don't want USD, mm. I don't want on chain. Oh, there's the Lightning. Yeah, as where they open the Bitcoin Beach wallet, and it's like receive. Yeah, yeah. but um, even in the Chivo, once they get to that, mm. for them to send or receive, it's like a thirty second. Yeah, mm. comp with, with most wallets, it's like three to four seconds, and you you're confirming mm. on both sides. Yeah. yeah, but for some. And I think that's because Chivo outsources the the Lightning component to to River, right. and I think there's just some clunkiness in the API mm -hmm. on how that information goes back and forth. Okay. So that's where the delay is. I don't think the delay is in the actual Lightning payment. It's yeah. actually just the communication within the wallet. Have you seen the video with Joe Nakamoto? And he's um, like, there's they've got a mm -hmm. credit card and a um, bulk card. And they they pay at the same time, and the lightning one just smokes it. It's so good because <laughs> it's 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 amazing. Uh, yeah, it's fast when yeah. it's done right. Yeah, and yeah, we've seen it and we experience it. We mm. love the lightning yeah. network. It's so good. Yeah, that's that's on our list is to roll out uh, the bolt card program here. Right. We have mm. uh, had Fernando from uh, Praia Bitcoin that uh, he's yes. he's really pushing that, and so we've. Um, we've committed to buying a hundred machines and, oh, and rolling yes. them out. Right. Uh, and I think it's going to be huge, yeah. especially for the families that, you know, don't have a smartphone or only yeah. have one. And I like it for the fact that now the kids can use Bitcoin without having to carry a smartphone with them. I don't yes. like to have my kids have a phone with them all the time. Yeah. And so I think it'll be so freeing for them to have that. And they have those cool rings that you can yeah. get or the bracelets. And so yeah. we are, we are I, all Satoshi Nakamoto on those guys. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I love that. Oh, we got one. We went to his mm. workshop. We it was so okay. Yes, yeah. He was so enthusiastic. Oh, yeah. he, he's such a great guy. Yeah. He really is. <laughs> it was cool. It's very cool. I, I, I invited him up to come to the conference. I'm like, you really need to come here and meet everybody. I want to learn from you and what you're doing yeah. with these machines. And he's a very technical guy, and I'm yes. not at all. <laughs> so I'm like, this will be perfect. And we've been helping them with a lot of things along the way. And Somehow I, I screwed up his uh, flight reservation because it was like a 30 hour flight. And oh, so man. I wasn't looking at the fact that he was getting in like a day and a half later. So so he oh, got wow. in like halfway through the first day of his uh, of the conference and missed his first uh, speaking engagement. Um, but he was super good natured about it. And and, you know, he just met everybody and yeah, and yeah, yeah. No, so yeah. it's um yeah. I, I think a lot of other projects are going to bubble up because yeah. of him yeah. and that he'll be mentoring all these other projects I mean, yeah. he's really sharp sharp yeah. guy oh yeah, yeah. And his passion yeah, yeah. The, uh, and this this i'm uh, just going to conference again the passion and the brains in that room yeah. was so cool it was so cool like this this is the place to be yeah yeah uh, it was by far the best Bitcoin conference that that I've been to, and I've been to, to several, but it, it's just yeah. something different about it. You have just the real builders and the people mm -hmm. that are doing stuff, and that was where the focus was rather than the, the hype and the flash and the influencers mm -hmm. and that thing. Not that there's anything wrong with with those aspects, and I think you know there's there's a, a lot of components to a strong Bitcoin community, yeah. but some of these conferences have become a little heavy on you know the the more flashy end and not on the where the work is really being done. Yeah. yeah. It was our first Bitcoin conference. Yeah. Okay. We were, we were well, <laughs> you, you, you guys are going to be spoiled now because <laughs> yeah. uh, anywhere else you go, you're going to be disappointed. Yeah. Our first yeah. conference in the first country in the world to accept yep. Bitcoin. Pretty mm -hmm. appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the other thing mm -hmm. that I think people underestimate about the conference in El Salvador that makes it so great is you can spend Bitcoin everywhere. Yeah. You know, we went to Argentina the week before and it's like, 
I'm at a Bitcoin conference and I can't spend yeah. Bitcoin anywhere. Even at a lot of the stuff at the conference, I yeah. couldn't spend Bitcoin. And so you're like, this doesn't feel right. No, yeah, yeah it's, it comes across as disingenuous. Mm. Um, but I guess uh, I don't want to suggest that that's how parts of El Salvador are. I mean, there's a huge learning curve and adoption <laughs> curve that has to take place. And there's some, there's some great people out there that are pushing for this. And they're not, you know, like Bitcoin Beach is one mm. of them. And then my first Bitcoin, like those two groups of people, mm. they're so important in this. And mm. it's so awesome to see them. And like, yeah, the what they're putting out is not just for El Salvador either. It's for the world. Yeah. This is huge. Yeah. The, the, my first Bitcoin does some great work. Yeah. Are you guys going to go on uh, Saturday to the island thing? No, I would no, love to. We, yeah. <laughs> Uh, we we get invited to all the gigs and we just mm. we just haven't the uh, timing just hasn't quite been yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. Um, but Nikki was like, I want to go down and take my board. <laughs> I was like, like, oh, yeah. Because we went down to Costa del It's Sol. beautiful out there. Yeah. Yeah. Those yeah. islands are very remote yeah. and very yeah yeah. It'd be perfect know, for your I know. Your I was like, oil board. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. huh. uh, we, we went down the uh, September. Yeah, yeah, but the um, Playa de Flores is further down. Uh, so where the island, where this is, it's it's up just after um, Costa del Sol, isn't it? It's Costa, yeah. Yeah, it's it's, it's it, you kind of come in from the other side yeah. over there. Yeah, yeah okay. Puerto yeah. Trifum, Triumfo, yeah. I think. Yeah, no, are you um, going? Um, possibly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm supposed to be, but I got to go to California the next week, and I've got all these things stacked up. So I told John, I'm like, if I can knock everything out this week, uh, yeah. I'll yeah. join. If not, we have uh, kind of an, another part of our team that's that's newer that's down in Punta Mongo where we just opened mm, mm, uh, yes. the kind of the new yeah. Hope House or, or we're calling it the Citadel of Hope down yeah. there to distinguish yeah. between the two. And so they're bringing a soccer team from there and they're going to awesome. come up and do a game with them and, and share with them. So so I'm, yeah. I'm hoping to get there, but but we'll we'll see. It's yeah. it's. Uh, and I can only be in so many places at the same yeah. time, and and I'm not getting any younger. I definitely can tell you that. So. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Uh, coming here, we're busier than we were in New Zealand. Yeah, and it's uh, a lot of it's to do with just being involved in the community. Mm. It's crazy. It's, yeah. We really love it. Love it. Yeah. yeah. I think it's it's great. Uh, you know, anywhere we go, anything we can do, if we can help in any way, you know, yep. we really enjoy it and sort of part of who what we're doing and i think you know i suppose that's how the, our youtube channels evolved is by was well, by being here and going you know initially we set it up for family and friends in new zealand so we could sort of show them what we're up to and um not many of them watch it <laughs> but uh we've a heap of salvadorans that live in yeah. the states and canada yeah. that they, they well, well tell us about it. tell mm. us about what you guys are doing with your mm. channel i've mm. i've seen numerous videos pop up in different places and so uh, mm. i don't know what the motivation behind that or mm. what the what you guys are like if, if you're planning to go into doing that full time or mm. share with the audience what <laughs> what you guys are doing where they can find you all that sort of thing mm. well we uh, yeah as i said we started it just due to the fact that we wanted to share you know it was the easiest way to uh share what we're up to uh, to our friends and family in new zealand and as one as one reporter one salvadoran reporter came and interviewed us he said uh to make sure that they know you're still alive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was so good. It's like, yeah, there's truth in that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, so initially it was more about our life here. That's how it sort of started, our journey of selling everything up and moving and moving here and the whole sort of, the, I suppose, emotional drama of yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then as as we started experiencing the Lightning Network and the, the buzz that you actually got from from using the the lightning and and paying for things and then you know talking to people about it and getting their seeing their eyes light up and had uh, you guys used lightning before you come to um, El Salvador? Oh, we we used yeah. yeah well, I used to bit, download not, the wallets and play yeah. with okay. it. Okay. Mm. The what was interesting was the uh, like the the oh, this is this is quite good actually. So the regulatory weight that's on on your mind mm. in a lot of these other countries is quite heavy, and I believe it's actually quite a big deterrent into. Uh, adoption around the world so knowing that it's a taxable event to use bitcoin in any other way other than as a store of value um, puts a lot of pressure on people not to experiment and learn and it's really unfortunate because once we came here that psychological uh barrier was lifted it's like well, we've got no choice this is, this is how it is here yes yeah. mm. and 
Oh, I've lost my train of thought there. Sorry, what was oh, that? We're using the Lightning Network but before we arrived. Oh, before yeah. we arrived. Yeah, so in New Zealand, so many Bitcoiners, I'm trying to like get them to uh, use it. They're not interested because it's too much work, it's too much yeah. effort. And then coming here, completely different mm-hmm. game. And we, we <laughs> Nikki, <laughs> Nikki went in uh, Orange Field, one of her clients on the phone uh, this yeah. week. Yeah, in New Zealand. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Nice. And, and they were yeah. blown away. They're like, because well, we downloaded, no, Wallet of Satoshi. Instant. No, no, Bitcoin oh. Beach. Oh, Bitcoin Beach. Oh, was it? Yeah. Okay, Bitcoin yeah. Beach. Got them on the Bitcoin Beach straight away. Sent them a uh, dollar just then and there. And they're like, did that just happen? Yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah, you got Bitcoin. And they're like, whoa. Because like, <laughs> yeah. no KYC, yeah. no nothing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, it was just a, the text number. message. Mm-hmm. That was it. Uh, and it's, people are blown away. Mm. Uh, but unless they have somebody who can... Um, my experience now is the best way to uh, orange pill people is to start with the experience, uh, low friction and high mm-hmm. speed, and it's fun. So that low friction basically means you get them on a wallet where the the setup process is close to mm-hmm. as zero as possible. Yeah. Downloading the app, and then you just send them a thousand sats or, or a dollar. And when they receive it and they see how fast and quick that was, it's like, because in their mind, they're like, I'm gonna have to sign up to, uh, some sort of exchange yeah. and I need my ID and I'm I'm going to have to do all these crazy things like set up a wallet and keys and that. Yeah, it's a story. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. Do you want the story? Yeah. Uh, so one of the best experiences we actually had mm. was we were in El, Tun- uh, El Tunco for dinner with some friends and these two American guys come in and uh, the older gentleman had a few to drink and uh, they're mm. like, oh, what are you guys doing here? And it's like, oh, we're here for Bitcoin. And I was like, that's the beginning and the end of it, you know. And they were like, oh, really? Oh, tell me more. Like, w- mm. like you've, you're here visiting? And it's like, no, no, we moved here. And they're like, whoa, like really blown away. And uh, they said, oh, we've just been talking to this girl who said that uh, Ethereum's the future and Bitcoin's dead. And I'm like, seriously? <laughs> I said, okay, look, I got one thing for you. I, I just want five minutes of your time. We're going to download one app and I'm going to send you Bitcoin real quick. And he's like, okay. And so he jumped through the hoops, uh, downloaded uh, the wallet of Satoshi, uh, sent him whatever it was, 5,000 sats, just on the spot right then and there. And he's like, so am I a Bitcoiner now? And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa slow down, slow down. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yeah, pretty much. But, and he's like, do I have to back up my keys and everything? Like he started asking all these amazing questions. And it's like, no, 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 it's, it's just slow down. I said, I want to go back to the Ethereum thing for a moment. I said, go back and ask her if she'll do the same thing where she'll send you like a dollar. And he's like, why? And I said, because you're going to have to go through all these KYC steps. And he goes, yeah, we tried to sign up to the app and I needed all my ID. And, and I'm like, yeah, exactly. And then she won't send you a dollar because the gas fees are going to be higher than whatever she sends you. And he's like, what? What are you talking about? And I'm saying, didn't she tell you that? <laughs> like the experience mm. on the Lightning app is uh, really impressive. Mm. And when normal people get a taste for that and see that it's not as complicated as they initially yeah. were led to believe or the media made them think or whatever the crazy Bitcoin friend had told them yeah. in the past, mm. um, we, we're having huge success. Yeah. And that's where we're starting now. Mm. so you guys are are basically just everywhere you're going you're trying to orange pill people yeah and then you're kind of video documenting it along the way and and putting it on your channel yeah as much as we can as much as we can yeah yeah it it does take a lot of time oh yeah Uh, yeah it takes you know putting putting together youtube was you know it's not it's not my um we're we're complete amateurs (laughs) yeah yeah, Yeah. so, so but yeah, it, it seems to take a lot longer than you would actually think it was going to take. But yeah, we're getting there. We're, and it's great. Mm. Like uh, a lot of people are really good natured about it mm. in terms of like the staff putting up with our questions. And yeah. then we go through the, you know, our broken Spanish. Uh, a lot of them love to practice their English. And so mm. we make a joke, you know, you practice your, your English, we spend it, practice yeah. our Spanish. And so we build rapport and relationship with these guys. And that also makes the lightning experience fun for them, especially when we ask if we can tip them. And that makes them think and it leaves them asking the question. And we really hope that they'll go away and go home and be like, man, I had these crazy foreigners. They wanted yeah. to pay with Bitcoin and then they wanted to like tip me. And uh, so mm. we think that uh, just people going around and having a fun experience yeah. with it. Uh, will really help the adoption a lot as well. Yeah. I know it's hard work doing it that way, but you may we may hit a point of um, w- exponential word of mouth. Yeah, mm. just keep doing that. Well, yeah. I, and that's that's these things build on each other. So yeah. you get to a certain base amount of people who understand how it works, mm. yeah. and then it'll just naturally filter out to all their friends. But getting that initial momentum going does take work. It takes people like you guys willing mm. to come in. Be patient. Have fun with it. I mean, yeah. if, if you can't have fun with it, oh, then yeah. then yeah. you're you know you're, 
there's no reason to, to, to do it. You'll kill yourself. You got to, you got to be patient and have fun. And, and yeah, these people are experiencing this for the first time, something that took most Bitcoiners, you know, yeah. years to get yeah. to. So we shouldn't expect that people are going to like jump right on it right away and get everything. No. Yeah. I mean, some of the other things that we're doing are sort of changing sorry, the topic a little bit is, you know, we, we're loving interviewing people <clears throat> in El Salvador. So whether it's telling people stories, so whether it's, you know, um, you know, expats coming in and why they've come into El Salvador or even locals and what they're doing here and, you know, sort of reasons for that yeah. has been really good too. So we're trying to get a good uh, story out about El Salvador sort of around the, you know, for all the people who are watching, yeah. especially the expat Salvadorians living in America or Canada, they're loving seeing Salvadorian yeah. stories. Oh, yeah. Here. So so I, you, you kind of hinted at that earlier. So that's a big part of your audience has yeah. become, yeah. Yeah. and yeah. you didn't really know any Salvadorans in the U.S. before, right? None. Okay. <laughs> None. So they yeah. they found you guys, yeah. this crazy New Zealander couple, yeah. and now they're following your guys' mm. exploits. Yeah. Mm. Like, mm. What, what kind of comments or what? What type of interactions do you have with um, them? Well, a lot, uh, very much. Well, thank you for showing us our country. You know, we haven't been here for 40 years and you're actually making me, us want to come home. You know, we're yeah. getting a lot of that, especially after our um, Lost Generation video YouTube that we put we put out. And so there's a lot, a lot of that. But now, because we do a Monday Live, mm -hmm. so we do like a short Monday Live, which is about our week past and what we've done and, uh, you know, as much Bitcoin stuff that we can share with people. And so now we're getting a lot of uh, expat Salvadorians who are interested in Bitcoin asking us more questions about how do we get this or how yeah. do we do this? How do we take part? How do we take part? Yeah. One of the so, funny stories about uh, Salvadorans that are now following our channel mm. we went to have dinner we were invited around to have dinner with uh mm. lucas mm. and we went around and he's like oh let's go get pupusas for dinner and we go down to this little pupusa yeah. shop and we're sitting there and he strikes up a conversation with the guy next to him and they they knew each other and he then goes oh by the way i know this guy pointing at me and he's like i watch your channel my wife and i mm -hmm. we we actually uh uh, he was Salvadoran. He's Salvadoran. She was American. From yeah. the States. Yeah. And he goes, because of your channel, we came back here mm. to look That's at awesome. what's going on. Yeah. And they came back for three months. months yeah. They, they were like, uh, they came, because they then came around for a drink afterwards. Mm. It was quite mm. cool. So he brought his wife around to meet us. Yeah. 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 And they were like, our kids are growing up. We're like, let's go down. Let's check it out. Let's see what it's like. Because if, if those foreigners are going to leave a safe place like New Zealand mm -hmm. and go and live in what's supposedly meant to be the most mm. dangerous country in the world, what are we missing? And yeah. they came back and they did it. And they were like, thank you. Because yeah. if it wasn't for people like you sharing what's happening in, in our country, we mm. wouldn't feel comfortable. We wouldn't believe it. Mm. And it's, yeah. um, so they went back for a week to get sort out their papers and then they moved back down. Yeah. Into their That's so dinner. awesome. Yeah. It's super cool. So we're getting a lot. Yeah. There's quite a few people like that, which we is awesome. When we first came down here, I think it was 2004, 2005, um, that was what I would find when I would tell Salvadorans in the U.S. <laughs> that, yeah, we bought a house in El Salvador. They would just look at me like aghast, <laughs> like, yeah. I would never go there. You couldn't mm. pay me to go back. Mm. And I'm like, no, it's a beautiful country. And, yeah. you know, obviously, at that, especially at that time, there was still a lot of challenges. Mm. But they were really the hardest to convince because they had such traumatic yeah. memories of mm. what had happened in the past. And mm. more recently, I've noticed I'm having conversations with people that are in the U.S., have been there for decades, a lot of them, a lot yeah. of them very successful yeah. with businesses, but still not in the U.S. illegally. They're still mm. there illegally, even though they, yeah. you know, are, a lot of them are running very successful yeah. businesses. Yeah. So they want to come back to El Salvador mm. now, but they're wrestling with, because if they come back, then they're it's for good. good. They yeah. can't go back and forth. Mm. And so, but even a lot of those are trying to weigh, well, maybe it's time to just come back. And, you know, a lot of them are in the legal process in the U.S. Mm. They're trying to get it all sorted mm. out. And so they feel like, oh, I'm 10 years in, do I want to leave now? But they're mm. also like, ah, you know, all these white people are moving down yes. to El Salvador, yeah, yeah, so yeah, maybe yeah, I should yeah. just go home. Yeah. So Some of those Salvadorans are now sending their children that are mm. US, U.S. citizens back here, mm. and they're having to go through a process to get get residency here. Yeah. It's funny how it's um, flipped on its head. It's, yeah. You've got these, these mm. uh, lost Salvadorans that are trying to return home right. now. Yeah. <laughs> 
No, it's so great though to see mm. people excited about their home country yeah. and yeah. and mm. people coming back. And mm. um, so, why don't you tell people where they can follow your mm. videos or what the best way to find them or or follow you guys on Twitter, yeah. all that yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, awesome, thank you. Uh, Twitter, so Nikki and James, so N J El Salvador. Yeah, and uh, we've got twitter.com slash NJ El Salvador, YouTube slash NJ El Salvador. They're our two biggest yeah. channels. And yeah. Insta as well, but it's, it's not so big. But yeah. yeah, so if you're an Insta fan, yeah. follow us there because we need some numbers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My <clears throat> my fake Instagram page has more followers than my <laughs> real one because yep. I never use it. So I get all these messages from friends. They're like, no, it has to be yours because it's the one with the most. I'm <laughs> yeah, like, no, yeah. the fake scammer one has more than I do. No way more fake. Yeah. Mm. yeah oh, man. Yeah. Very good. Uh, this, well, yeah. it's so fun getting mm. the, you know, I, obviously we've we've gone to some events together and I've seen mm. you guys in Hope mm. House and seen you all around, but to kind of hear more of your story mm. and uh, now I know where I can find yes. more of your videos. How, how often do you guys post? We try once a week. Yeah. Okay. But we have since conference actually been pretty much like, I think we got pretty worn out. Not too bad. No. Uh, I think this last week we might have missed yeah. one. Yeah. But we did last week, we actually did, um, we've now sourced a woman who can now get mortgages for non-residents. Nice. To buy properties. So yeah. our latest video is with Gladys in and regards it's, it's to that. It's actually really Salvadorans. Cool. Who are using, using her system, okay. but, 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 but anyone like any expat to have come in yeah. and um, don't yeah. want to spend their Bitcoin or yeah. cash on their Bitcoin at the moment because Bitcoin's low, they have the ability to, and they yeah. only need 20% deposit. Really? Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll have to get the, her, her <laughs> info from you guys yeah. because I have people ask that all the time. Mm. I mean, that's always the first thing. People are like, yeah. hey, I want to buy a house, but I'm like, okay, what? You're gonna have to pay cash. So like, yeah. well, no, I'll just yeah. get a mortgage. Like, yeah, no. And she she's got a um a bank. It's a our Salvadoran bank, um, okay. bank that you, you go to, and uh, she says the bank you set up bank account. She can get your bank account really easy, which is not is not no, a simple no. thing. No, but, it took me ten years here yeah. to get a bank account. So, <laughs> oh, that's great. yeah. So, I mean, that's changing now. It's getting yeah. easier. The yeah. the new mm. government is. I joke now that when I go home and have to do something at the government there, I'm mm. like. Man, why couldn't this government? Why couldn't the U.S. Yeah. be more like El Salvador? It's so yeah. much more convoluted to try to do anything in the U.S. than it mm. is here. So yeah. mm. that's a good sign. Mm. It's a good mm. sign. Yeah, but no. So that's really good. So they're the sort of stories we, you know, we're coming up with as well. You know, it's not just what we're doing on the ground, but it's all these other interesting things that are helping yeah. people come and settle in El yeah. Salvador. Yes, yeah, so yeah. we we cover um, uh, like obviously what we do here in mm. everyday life. But we're also covering interesting projects that are happening. So, mm. um, new story. Yeah. Uh, we've got one in the works yeah. with them. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Which is cool. Uh, and just, yeah. yeah. Paul Hay with his coffee, you know. Yeah. You know, so we, yeah. Yeah. We're, we're working on, and we're building amazing relationships with people. Yeah. It's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, well, well perfect. I'm going to have mm. to ask you guys uh, for, <laughs> for who we should uh, interview next here on, yeah. uh, on the podcast. Mm. Sounds like you've, Made some great connections. Yeah, so. no, it's really good. Yeah, I'm enjoying it. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, appreciate you guys uh, spending the evening with us. No, and no uh, thank you. everybody, make sure you follow their exploits mm -hmm. and uh, their journey here as the the New Zealand refugees in El Salvador uh, yeah. making a life for themselves. So. Yeah, yeah, um, no, that's good. super happy to be here. Oh, thank, yeah. And we we love what Bitcoin Beach has been doing. Yeah, and all like there's so many good groups of people doing good stuff mm -hmm. here. And we try to be part of as much as we can, mm -hmm. and it's uh, mm. it's awesome. So yeah, it takes yeah. a bit of time, but it's it's great. Yeah, yeah. yeah we really enjoy it. Mm. Thank you. Well, we'll have to have you guys back on yeah. in a few months <laughs> and uh, get an update. Yeah, oh, we better get busy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank no, thanks, right. thanks, Mike. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah.